We're here to visit one of the most glorious football clubs ever, AFC Ajax. Four times European champions, two times world champions. Only three clubs have done better than that. But what people like the most about Ajax is the fact that it has created one of the most beautiful, one of the most spectacular football ever. The fact that it has developed an outstanding youth program that has given birth to great champions like Johan Cruyff, Dennis Bergkamp, Marco van Basten, Wesley Schneider and many others. It all happened during and before the 1990s when football was still about sport and entertainment. Today football is mainly about business models and the huge investments required to buy success. For a club like Ajax located in a smaller country like Netherlands with uh, limited market reach and with uh, limited TV rights, it is difficult to remain competitive. Perhaps it's time we change that and we try to salvage a great team like Ajax and with it the rest of football. Today we have the honor to interview the man who will bring Ajax back. It's CEO, Rich van den Bach. We all miss Ajax great football. What can we do to bring it back? If you see the times of Ajax, which for the last was somewhere in the mid-90s, where we really were successful, of course, in 95, 96, um, compared to now, you see that the, the financial situation of the whole football area has changed completely. Um, so I think it's two things. One is, uh, if, if you want to be back to the top, you should have a financial fair play situation where it's more equal and not a big difference as this moment. Um, secondly, I think you need to have a vision as a club. And I think especially the second thing you can influence, and that's what we try to do with Ajax, is really create a business model where we were successful in, in, in let's say, in the past uh, with, with the education of youth and bring that back and make sure that the youth education we have is again the very best of the whole world. What are the main reasons that you think that um, uh, Ajax has lost um, contact with the great European teams like Real Madrid, Milan? I think the difference is the money. I mean, if you look to an Italian team, which uh, a funder of a team uh, spent about a billion in the last six, seven years, and of course they won a triple last year, so yes, it's okay. I wonder who that person is. Yeah, but you will find it out. With it. <laughs> but you have that in many countries, of course. Also, uh, if you look to Real, uh, which is a tremendous team, great players, but they have a debt of almost a billion. At ICE, we have no debt. Yes, we are in a difficult financial situation, but we have no debt. Um, even though also we have to uh, rebalance our policies, because what you saw is that also we had a Champions League budget and we were only playing in UEFA league so that means that you always every year have a loss unless you sell players and I think that that we need to find a, yeah, a, a reality in that and, and of course if you look to money also. You've now been here for one year and a half you've been you had great results like you reached the Champions League your best players stayed like Luis Suarez <laughs> so what still needs to be done and what are your objectives? Uh, one of the objectives is to be champion. We, we would like to have the 30th title. Eh? We are 29, so it gives a third star in, in our vision. So that's something that's widely living, especially last year when we just missed it on a, on a hair because we had 85 points, which is an all-time high with 106 goals uh, for us and only 19 against, which was a tremendous year. And then still there was one team that was better or having more, more points. So that's... Um, we would like to reach that, that's one. Uh, secondly, we would have a financial stable situation. Eh? We come from a point where we had a, a certain level of minus uh, where we lived up to, um, but then we con could com compensate with selling players, which happened, of course, in the last 10 years. I mean, we sold a lot of players for hundreds of millions, um, and that compensated the losses we made. So then you can build. But in, you, we know that the financial situation in the world changed a bit. So transfers of 95 million or 65 million, I, I, I don't expect them to happen anymore. So it means also that we had to change our policy. And um, so we are lucky and glad that, that all the players stayed. So, and you see it immediately in the results, because then the team is 
quicker in a sort of balance than in the last year because you always had to change a lot of players and uh, so that's one and secondly it's the youth academy of course we are strong believers that by by investing in youth investing in the trainers investing in the premises um, making sure the uh, the ideology we we have so that the vision we have is shared and everybody understands is working with it and is educated in it that will bring even more results than we had in the past the one i think that Cruyff had the six plus five, so every team would be obliged to have six Home players maybe. coming from uh, the youth program. I suppose I from a, a uh, team like Ajax, that would be great. Yeah, it would, it would help us tremendously because we, we are used to that. I mean, especially now we have eight uh, youth players in our first team. And out of the 25 players we have in the A uh, selection, it's 17. Mm -hmm. So that's about 60-70% of all those players are out of our own youth academy. I think it, it, it needs to be done. And not only by or for financial fair play or let's say the, just the competition, but also for your supporters. So no, I think that should be done. I mean, that's a rule that's easy to implement. And I think that also would create, again, a sportive more f fair play than it is at this moment. Everybody speaks about uh, your youth program, which is one of the best. So can you go more in details about why it's so great and why it has stayed great for so many years? The 10% that are the top players like Van der Vaart, Snyder, we can name a lot of those guys, they're in the top 10%. That's a bit of luck. I mean, you can't create them, they're born. Yeah, they are the best, they are the guys that you need to be lucky to bring them in very young, like we have now a guy like Christian Eriksen. I mean, we know that this guy is going to be one of the best players in Europe. The other 80, 90%, is good scouting, especially around the areas here. So we have 70 scouts running around, making all the notes, bringing into the system so we can really follow these guys and understand to bring the best in. Uh, secondly, of course, having the best trainers. I mean, we have a lot of trainers that, that have had a career as a football player. Um, I think the third thing what we do now is train the trainer that he understands not only the technical and tactical uh, capacity but also the wider scope you need now to create this football play because you, you win games mentally. You don't win the game with only the, your legs and, and good football play. These guys now have 10,000 things to do. It's the computer, it's the film, it's the video, it's the gaming. What we now are doing here at the Youth Academy is bringing all the technology, what they used to work with, into the Youth Academy. It means that we have video systems, we have tracking systems, we, we can, uh, the physiological systems that we can share the information, what are you doing, how are you improving, what went wrong, and you show it to these guys. Since you're speaking about technology and there is more technology in coaching, do you think there should be more technology also in a game itself or uh, that's to a, avoid that, goals like... That's a like dangerous <laughs> question. Uh, there is so much money involved now that I think that it's a necessity to have these things on the goal line. And even the audience would like it. And there can be just the same talks uh, afterwards about all the decisions. So I think the lines, so is it the goal or not, should be in. There are some ideas because I suppose that a few people like this imbalance. So one of the ideas, for example, is the uh, Benelig, the uh, Belgium and Netherlands league to allow yeah. the best teams to play, so I largest market. I'm not a believer in this. Since our name is goal.com, <laughs> what is your most memorable goal? The, the most memorable goal which is the goal from Marco from Basti in um, 1988 against Russia where he, nobody would have shot at goal, uh, I think, when he was there, but he just did it on purpose. I mean, it was what he wanted to do. And uh, it was not a lucky goal. Of course, you need a bit of luck, that, but that was what he was planning to do. And your most personal goal that you have scored? Um, yeah, I'm not that old that you, you start to forget some things, but I, I, I hope I'm, going, I'm still going to score him. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.